This is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time, and it is basically walking you through how I rebuild a set of carburetors. Today we're going to be doing a set of dual carburetors off of a VT600. First thing we're going to do is get rid of all the hoses and the choke cable. We're going to pull this guy off. So this little rubber sleeve fits on here and this piece gets unscrewed. So you can use your fingers to unthread that. This one wasn't stuck in there. Got lucky. And there's one cable choke. This is uh, where your choke's being held. There's a little uh, retainer plate right there. You just unscrew that and you can rotate this and it comes right out. Other side of the choke, same process over here. You're gonna pull this rubber off. That's just old. Um, doesn't really affect the functionality of the car, but not always a great thing. 10 millimeter combination wrench. Don't use pliers. Don't use a Mexican speed wrench. And same deal here, you're gonna unscrew this. And it helps to pull this away. You can see that the there's a spring inside here, this is spring loaded. So if you pull this away, Gives your fingers a little bit more room. I mean, I have Jimmy Dean sausage fingers, so um, it's not easy to fit them in little tight places, but it's not that difficult to get this out. If you break this little plastic piece or you break the clutch, or sorry, the uh, choke cable, you're gonna need to replace it. There's no replacement parts for them. You can get um, shorty choke knobs, which I have on the site, uh, but some people don't want those. They actually want the original choke cable and you can find them online all over the place. This one's pretty haggard, a little beat up. You can see some of the, uh, the rubber covers here are just completely disintegrated. There's a lot of rust in here. Um, you can actually just put some uh, grease in the other end. You can drop it in here if you want. As long as you keep these lubricated, as with any cables on your bike, you'll have a much longer uh, life lifespan for these on your bike. Next up, we have two hoses that come into a T, and there's this long hose leading off of them, and we're gonna remove these. And these go to your float bowl. This is the vent to vent the float bowl because if you fill something up with fluid, if you try to, and there's no way for the air to escape and equalize the pressure, then fluid can't get in. There we go. And this is garbage. You can pull this off. This is feeding the rear cylinder. This is feeding the front cylinder. Um, somebody actually did not route this hose correctly. This is supposed to be on this side. You want to take this and put it this way, and that's the correct installation. So we're going to pull this fuel line off. This is the uh, slide vent right here. So when the slide moves up and down inside the slide chamber, this allows the pressure to equalize. all about venting shit. All right, now that we've removed all the hoses, we're gonna remove this, which holds your throttle cable, and this little guy here, which can hold a Fortis Crucem plate or uh, the hideous stock carb cover, which is um, pretty underwhelming. You're gonna want an impact driver, and an impact driver, you're gonna use it with a hammer, and it applies downward force and torque to a, to a screw or bolt that's stuck. I never attempt to remove these with a regular screwdriver just because I know that I'm just gonna get myself in trouble. It's gonna strip the head out. <clears throat> so right here we have two little Phillips screws that need to be removed. You're gonna wanna make sure you're not putting all the weight when you use an impact driver on fragile parts that could break like this or this. I'm gonna be putting the weight on the body here and I have a rubber pad underneath this towel to kind of take some of the, the impact off. It's really all it takes. You don't have to smack the living shit out of it. Just one tap and it breaks stuff loose. This one came off really nice. Um, you can soak them, or it's, I think it's like PB Blaster, and it does help loosen bolts. Um, if you have a small uh, burns matic butane torch, you can use that carefully. There's plastic pieces that if they burn, they are toast. And that's another thing that you break that, Honda doesn't sell them individually, you gotta get new carbs. You have these two little guys here. 
One of them has a little plastic sleeve. And I believe this is seven millimeters. So we're gonna loosen these up with a seven millimeter combination wrench. So you've got your little cable retaining plate there. The washers and the screws go with it. This is your idle adjustment screw, and we're gonna take this off as well. So we're gonna turn our attention to the bottom of one of these carbs and the float bolt. I'm gonna gently test each screw. They're good. I don't need to use the driver. That's good. If these don't come out with gentle pressure like this one, you can see this is already stripped. And this is really where an impact driver is gonna help you. Somebody else has already gone in here like a freaking baboon on crack and tried to get it out. Um, get your impact driver and should come out pretty easy. There we go. So we are going to remove these screws. I haven't actually taken this apart before the video. In typical TJ Brutal Customs fashion, I oftentimes shoot from the hip. Okay, so <clears throat> not too bad. I'm not super bummed out. This is fucking haggard, that's bad. But this could be way worse. There's this brown stuff in here. This is varnish from gasoline drying out. If you are going to store your bike or let it sit for longer than a week or two, especially with modern fuel, drain the, drain the float bowls. There's a screw on every float bowl. You just open that up, shut your pet cock off first, and then drain this. Drain out both carbs. If you have two or if you have one, just drain the whole carb and close it back up. That way there's nothing drying up in here that's gonna foul up all your carbs guts. The next step, we're gonna take out the float and the float valve. And the float it, uh, hinges on a little pin right here. Use a little pick and come in from this side. If you guys can see this. I'm kinda having to do this backwards. So, <laughs> And just push it through. You can see it coming out on this side. You can't pull out with your fingers. Set of pliers, lean those, pull that pin out. <clears throat> Save that pin, don't lose it. So now you can pull out your float and there'll be a little float needle on it. And now we're gonna remove the float valve seat. And to do that, you're gonna get a little 10 millimeter socket and break it loose. And that's what you're gonna pull out. Also gonna be a little aluminum washer right here that out set that aside if you look down there you can see there's something stuck in there and that is a little filter that's supposed to be on the back side of the valve so I'll fish that out so this little filter you can wash it out you can clean it um, if you're gonna reuse your uh, float seat then it just pushes on the end there it's kind of simple now we're going to remove the jets we have a pilot jet here a main jet and a jet holder now I'm going to pull out the pilot jet here and we have our main jet and jet holder. So for this, you want to hold the holder, the jet holder with a wrench at seven millimeters and get your screwdriver and remove the main jet. To remove the holder, you just unscrew it. And you are going to want to keep this. Don't throw that away. That is something you will need. So we're going to put this through the cleaner later. All right, so you've removed all the business out of this float bowl. Now we're going to go to the top side of this uh, carb, and we're going to remove the slide cover and the slide. All righty, despite their rust, they slipped out pretty quick. 